<laughs> you are listening to Epic Satellite Radio. Amazing. Technology is incredible, and satellites are crazy expensive. It costs around $800 million to build and launch a GPS satellite. And right now, there's just about 30 of them orbiting the Earth. That's around $25 billion worth of GPS. It's helping you navigate to every Tinder date you've ever been on. So what's better than billions of dollars of satellites orbiting the Earth? <laughs> Destroying billions of dollars of satellites orbiting the Earth. This is how it's destroyed. This recording will self According to NASA, that kick-ass thing America used to have... Hello? A satellite is a machine that orbits a planet or star, and there's a crap load of them. Over 4,250 satellites orbit the Earth, and since the average lifespan of a geostationary satellite is only eight years, they go obsolete or break really fast. Which means they need to be destroyed. But first, have you ever wondered how a satellite actually works? Yes, please! Well, here it is. A satellite's basically a billion dollar space mirror. It takes a signal sent from one side of the Earth and bounces that thing right back to another location. But we don't want to know how they work. We want to see how they're destroyed. And it's hard to find any destruction bigger than warfare. Especially when it comes to destroying something in space. Destroying a satellite with a weapon isn't rocket science. Seek! It's exactly rocket science. Anti-satellite weapons are space weapons designed to destroy satellites for military purposes. So here's the basics. For a missile to blow up a satellite, a target needs to be set. Then, the missile has to compensate for the satellite's movement and the time and distance the weapon needs to make impact. For China to blow up a U.S. intelligence satellite orbiting 500 miles high and moving 4.7 miles per second, they need an intermediate-range ballistic missile to compensate for 840 miles of movement in just about three minutes. It's like this. A missile has to move fast enough to break out of the Earth's atmosphere while using tracking technology to hit a moving target in space. The basic principles of ballistics used on Earth to hit a target are used in space. But intergalactic ballistics is mind-blowingly difficult and insanely expensive. But there is another kind of strategic satellite destruction that's a little less expensive. When a satellite's damaged, its technology goes obsolete, or it becomes a hazard to other spacecrafts or a danger to Earth, it gets decommissioned. Most satellites are designed with a self-destruct mode. This end-of-life destruction mode works in two primary ways depending on the height of a satellite's orbit. For satellites orbiting closer to Earth, engineers will use the last bit of fuel it has to slow it down, causing it to fall out of orbit and burn up in the Earth's atmosphere. For satellites in a higher orbit, their end-of-life destruction cycle blasts them even further into space. So just how far? A massive 22,400 miles away from Earth in something called a graveyard orbit. Strategic military destruction and decommissioning take a mind-blowing amount of engineering and science. But there is another common satellite destruction that's not so intentional. Accidental death is when a satellite falls out of orbit and re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. And by re-enter, I mean scorched towards the Earth faster than the speed of sound burning through the atmosphere like a blazing comet. But before we get to that, we need to talk about gravity. Technically, an orbiting satellite is always falling towards the Earth. It just never hits. Falling objects on Earth make impact because of gravity. But if objects here could fall at the same rate as the curve of the Earth, that's well over 17,000 miles per hour, we'd never make impact just like a satellite. It's that precise velocity that keeps the satellite in orbit. In space, satellites stay in orbit with the help of a ton of mind-blowing science called I know what that is! You do not know what that is. Once a satellite is orbiting perfectly, its speed and position are maintained and corrected to keep it orbiting properly. But like a fast and furious car crash, a sudden change in that velocity is doomsday for a satellite. That's where things like solar flares, atmospheric anomalies, power failures, and meteor showers come into play. When something weird happens in outer space, like an intense energy eruption on the sun's surface, that's called a solar flare, it takes this, and knocks it off course or destroys its power supply. How fast is a satellite's death fall? Just about 17,500 miles per hour. 
At a re-entry speed that high, that chunk of metal is generating heat upwards of 3,000 degrees. But do we really care about molten projectiles falling towards Earth? Hell, yes we do. On July 11, 1979, a 90-ton space station called Skylab plummeted towards Earth and debris from it landed in southeastern Australia near Perth. While no one was hurt, NASA was given a $400 ticket for littering. Which, believe it or not, they never paid. Way to go, government. Here's a mind blower. Half a million pieces of space debris are tracked each year, and on average, one per day falls into the Earth's atmosphere. So accidental satellite death is a real possibility. But before we end transmission, we've got a bonus destruction for you. Right now, a prototype Pac-Man satellite is being developed to swallow up and destroy Cube satellites. If this cannibal technology continues and gets scaled up to a massive size, we may be on the verge of destroying satellites with a space robot straight from science fiction. Hey, thanks for watching How It's Destroyed. We'll be releasing new episodes every week this month, so don't forget to subscribe. And while you're at it, click right here to see more great shows on All Me.